Hey, howdy, hey, welcome to your, welcome back to my channel. Um, for tonight's video, we are going to be reviewing RuPaul's Drag Race Season 14, Episode 8. So, if that sounds good to you, make sure to hit that like button, comment down below, and hit that subscribe button, come join the Sandwich Hour community. And without further ado, let's get this video started. <laughs> So for today's episode, the queens had to get into girl groups and do girl group performances, 60s girl groups more specifically, um, and it was a lot of fun. It was a really great um, ep challenge, great episode. I honestly really enjoyed this episode. I always love the girl group challenges, and I think adding the 60s uh, girl groups twist to it was a really fun um, way to kind of make it different and um, just a really fun challenge. I really enjoyed watching this this week, honestly. One of my favorite challenges they've done recently. So, um, obviously the episode starting out when the queen's walking back into the workroom after the non-elimination. Because, of course, um, the top two lip sync versus a bottom two lip sync. Where, um, of course, Lady Camden is super happy that she won. Um, obviously it's a big moment for her. This is her first win. It's been building up for Camden, and I think this was a really great time for her to get a win. So I'm super happy for Lady Camden. Um, I really enjoy her in this show, and I think she's a great queen on the season. So, um, Lady Camden won. Um, they're all, Daya's also talking about how she wants a win still, but was happy to be noticed, happy to be in the top break, her safe streak. Um, and yeah, that, that was about it. Um, honestly, we're gonna go ahead and get into the next day in the workroom, where the queens come in, and then pretty quickly RuPaul comes in and introduces the mini challenge, where the queens are going to have to do the reading challenge. Again, this reading challenge is something that happens, something that happens every season, because reading is what? Fundamental! Okay, <laughs> um, so for the reading challenge, um, let's get into it. So, in terms of the reads... Um, overall, I thought the reading challenge was okay. Um, there were a few really good moments. Of course, my top two queens for the reading challenge were going to be Lady Camden, who I think did a great job. I also really enjoyed Bosco. I think Bosco's reads were really great, and you can tell from the editing who the tops were going to be because they each got three reads, as opposed to everyone else getting two. Um, I also really enjoyed George's read on, uh, uh, Jasmine Kennedy, I thought that was a great moment when she was like, you prove that white does crack, white do crack, you, you get the drill. I thought that was a funny moment. Um, overall, I really enjoy a reading challenge, and I thought this one was pretty good. Um, obviously, in the end, the winner of the reading challenge is going to be Bosco, so congratulations to Bosco. Good job winning your first mini challenge. Work, yes, go. Um, and also, RuPaul introduces the match main challenge, which is going to be the girl groups, um, where they're going to be split up into three different groups, and each group is going to get to pick their own song, write their own lyrics, do their own choreography, and put together a girl group number. So, um, in terms of the groups, RuPaul basically tells them that they get to decide on their own groups and their own songs, so it's kind of they all come together on the couches, listen to all the musics, all the musics, all the songs, and they all pick out what um, song they want to be in. So we get the three different groups, the Shingru Lodge, which of course is going to end up being Willow, Bosco, and Daya. Then of course we get the um, Ru So the Rupremes, of course, were um, Angeria, Carrie, and Lady Camden. So that was the second group, and then the third group, of course, was going to be the Brunettes, which are going to be um, Jasmine, Georges, and Deja. So for um, the Runettes, um, there were four people who wanted to be in the Chengru Laws, which of course were um, Daya, Bosco, Willow, and Deja. And Deja ended up um, letting go and joining the Runettes. So that was the final groups. The, the final groups, um, and they start getting into their groups, writing their lyrics, doing the things. Again, right from the bat, we're gonna go through each group um, for the. Uh, Chengru Laws, which of course Willow, Bosco, and Daya. Um, they all seem to work well together. They all worked together in the previous challenge. So they seem to have a good re repertoire. Repertoire? Rep 
good working relationship, if you will. I think this was a good group. It flows together. Again, I like to say it flows well together, but I think they flow well together. Um, so I think that that was a good group. And then, of course, the root primes being Angeria, Carrie, and uh, Camden. Um, right off the bat, this group seems to be good. I think they all get along well. Again, I'm really enjoying the um, friendship that is being built between uh, Angeria and Camden, and I think they're really great together, and I think um, all three of them together was just a really great group. They're all good friends. Um, I th thought it was a really great group. And then, of course, we have Deja, Georges, and um, Jasmine Kennedy in the um, runet Runettes. Runettes? Brunettes. Um, for this group, again, right from the bat, Jasmine is not a great singer, and I think she's making it pretty clear from the start. But again, auto-tune, you know, we they can make it work, um, so they do that, and then they go record with Michelle. So we're, again, going through the different groups. Obviously, for the Shangri Laws, it all flows really well. Bosco does a really great job in the recording session. Um, and also, I think uh, Dai does a really great job as well. They didn't show Willow, which was I'm a, I was a bit upset about because I love Willow. And it was making it very clear to me that Willow was going to be safe this week. Because, um, of course, when, when, when you start to learn the edit, they can kind of show you who ultimately will be safe. And you should be able to have a pretty good idea. So that was the Shangri-Las. Then, of course, when we get to the Root Primes, Angie kills it. I love Angie this episode. Like, Angie did so well this episode. Truly one of my favorites. Um, and then, of course, uh, Lady Camden. They didn't show, I don't think. And Carrie, not the most um, comfortable behind the mic. Doesn't really sing too much, so she's a bit more nervous. Um, also doesn't have too much experience with um, girl groups. Um, so... That what happened. And then, of course, with the Runettes, um, De Deja is a bit nervous because she doesn't really sing. But right from the bat, she works with Michelle, and she, she seems to get it pretty quickly. For Georges, um, she is messing it up a bit. Um, obviously, the, when you met him, moment that met him, for when Georges kept going, met him, I'm not a singer. But <laughs> you know what happened. And then, of course, we get... Um, Jasmine, who again, not a great singer. Like, there are a few queens in this season who, I mean, none of them are great singers, but there are a few scene queens on this season who just really don't know what they're doing, and they can't seem to figure out a character to make it work. Um, I think when it comes to a girl group, if you aren't the most comfortable at singing, you can really build up a character and make Guru laugh. Again, a big part of this entire competition is making Guru laugh. So if you make a fun character, you can make it work and kind of get away with it, if that makes sense. So for choreo, for the Shangri Laws, again, it all flows well together. They all work well together. It's a cute moment. Um, yeah, work. For the um, Rupremes, um, Camden is a choreographer, so she's trying to t um, help the queens, help them out, and kind of make it all work. However, Carrie and Angeria are not great dancers, so Camden is making a very simplified choreo, again, to try to make it work for everyone, which I think is a great sort of tactic to use, especially when you have queens who aren't the most comfortable at dancing. It all works well together when you do that sort of option. And then, of course, we get the group with Deja, um, Georges, and Jasmine, who all have pretty much pretty big dancing experience. However, um, because Deja is a cheerleading, uh, choreographer, cheerleading choreographer, she kind of takes over a little bit, and I think Jasmine and Georges were getting a little bit annoyed with her and a little bit put off by that. Um, so that's a moment. Um, but yeah, honestly, we're gonna get to the next day, which is, of course, the elimination day. Queens are getting in their mugs, getting their beats together, all the things. We have this moment with Carrie, where Carrie is talking about her childhood, not really being able to listen to music because her family was so involved in the church, um, and also not really being able to truly be her own, own authentic self. Um, this was a really, again, trauma talk. It, it's, it's tough to watch, um, and I feel, I feel, I felt really bad for Carrie in this moment. Like, I love Carrie Colby, and I, that was a tough moment to watch. Learning more about her upbringing and all the issues that she had growing up is, is a tough moment. Um, but yeah, um, there's some trauma talk. Then, of course, we had Camden, who was 
really empowered by girl groups, more specifically the Spice Girls with the idea of girl power. That was a really great moment. Um, and then, of course, we had another moment between uh, D Daya and Jasmine, where Jasmine, or Daya asked Jasmine, or Jasmine, there was a whole moment with drama between the two of them. It was, it was a moment, sure. Um, honestly, I want to get to these performances and RuPaul's look and all the above. So right off the bat, I'm going to go over RuPaul's look. I like this. I really like this. I don't know if that's just me. Let me know what you thought down below. Like, I like the color. I think it's fun. It's just a fun dress. I enjoy it. I like the fringe. I love a fringy dress moment. I thought that was cute. So, that yeah, work. Alright, now we're going to get to these performances. For the Shangri-Las, I love this. I thought Willow did great. I thought Bosco did great in Diet. They all worked well together. It flowed so well. Again, I really, really enjoyed this challenge like I thought it was a great episode like I love this music I thought all the queens did really well like overall I really enjoyed the challenge I thought it was a great moment so for this group I really loved them um they all worked together well and it all was just really nice and really good music I I love this group so when it comes to the Rupremes of course we had um Angeria uh Carrie and um Camden so Angeria owned this group. Angeria was the leader in this group in terms of my my perspective. Angeria was the best. I love Angeria. And I thought this was a great moment for Angie. Like, she did so well this episode. So well. I loved Angie this episode. She should have won, if we are being real here. Um, but I love this group. And then, of course, we get the uh, brunettes with um, Deja, uh, Jasmine, and Georges. So for this group, Jasmine's not the most comfortable, and you can tell. Georges is fine. I think I think she does a fine job in the end. And then, of course, we have Deja, who I think did a pretty great job for her performance. I really enjoyed it. It was a cute moment. Yeah, work. All right. Now, when it comes to runway, the, excuse me. <clears throat> the runway theme was heart on. So I'm going to go ahead and give you some of my highlights for the runway and some of the weaker ones, if you will. So, in terms of the runway, my favorites this week, I really, really enjoyed Angeria Paris Van Michael's look. I thought Angie looked great. I love this wig. I love this dress. I thought it was so cute. The color blocking was great. I love the I heart you. Of course, heart right on the chest. Heart on. Broke. I thought that was a really cute moment. A really great look from Angie. I also really, really enjoyed Willow's look. I thought Willow looked great. Honestly, Willow had one of my favorite looks as well. For me, Willow should have been in the top, if we are being real here. Um, I thought Willow slayed this episode, and I honestly feel like the production was playing in her face a little bit here, if I am being real here. Um, and I also really enjoyed Bosco's look. I thought Bosco looked great. Really great job from Bosco. So for the weaker looks, alright, I'm gonna go in here a little bit. I did not like Daya's look at all. I don't... I like the concept. I just didn't... I think the wig was the biggest thing throwing it off for me. And the makeup wasn't my favorite. Um, So for me, this was probably one of my weaker looks. Again, let me know what you think down below about this look. But for me, it was a bit weaker. If I'm being 100% real here. Um, Then, of course, we get Carrie Colby. I don't think this was a great look. Um, I, I love Carrie. I feel like she... I mm, it and it was the assignment, but it wasn't my favorite. It was it was pretty low for me. And then the last one I really was not a huge fan of was Deja Sky. If I'm being real with her, you guys here, when she walked out, I kind of laughed a little bit because I was just like, this is not it. I love Deja. I just did not like this look at all. Um, yeah. Um, for the safe looks for me. Georges looked cute. It, again, it was basically just her coming out in underwear with a heart behind her. Which, like, it worked for the assignment. It was a safe look, if we are being real here. Um, then, of course, Jasmine. Um, it was fine. It. I don't think it had enough hearts on it for the runway category. And for me, it needed to be elevated more. Um, let me know what you think down below, of course. And then finally, Camden. I really like this look. For me, it was the top of the middle, so, like, I really enjoyed this look from Camden, but, um, not the best. Not the worst. Alright, so now when it comes to placements, 
The safe queens this week are going to be Willow, um, Georges, and, um, who's the... Bosco. Those are the three safe queens. For me, my safe queens would have been Daya, um, probably, uh, Georges, and... Daya, Georges, and yeah. Anyways, for the tops this week, um, RuPaul decides the tops are going to be Daya, Angie, and, um, Deja. For me, the top three would have been Willow, Angie, and, um, Bosco. Yeah, that would have been my top three. My bottom, the bottom three this week are going to be Carrie, uh, Jasmine, and Camden. I kind of agree with this top bottom three. I don't know if I necessarily would have put Camden in the bottom three. Let me know who you would have put in the bottom three down below. But obviously, in the end, RuPaul decides this. But it is later announced that the winner this week is going to be Daya Betty. So congratulations to Daya on getting your first win. Again, really great timing to get a win. Um, so, work, good job, really great job, yeah, work. Um, I personally would have given the win to Angie out of the top three that were left, um, because I think Angie just owned this episode, I thought she did so well. Such a great job from Angie. Really great way to bounce back from last week, and I thought Angie, great job. So, in terms of the bottom two, RuPaul announces that the two queens lip-syncing are going to be Jasmine Kennedy and Carrie Colby. Um, this was a sad moment, because, of course, they're really great friends, and they're sad to have to lip sync against each other, but it happens. Um, so for the lip sync, it was fine. I, I, Jasmine was definitely dancing a lot more. I do feel like Carrie kind of gave up at one point. It wasn't a bad lip sync. I think Jasmine did a really great job, and I enjoyed watching Carrie perform. Just, I don't think she did what she needed to do to survive this week. Anyways, in the end, RuPaul does announce that Jasmine is safe. And unfortunately, Carrie Colby has to reveal her chocolate bar. So Carrie's unraveling her chocolate and reveals it's chocolate. Wah, wah. Which unfortunately means Carrie Colby had to sashay away. Again, I'm sad to see Carrie go. However, I do feel like it was getting to be her time to go. Um, I don't think she was doing well enough to really continue on at this point. Again, we'll have to wait and see what happens later in this um, season. But right now we are at a top eight. Next week, the challenge is going to be a DragCon panel challenge, and we are getting, um, of course, uh, Nicole Byer back as a guest judge, and I love Nicole Byer. I'm obsessed. So, I'm super excited for that. Um, yeah. Let me know what you think about this episode down below in the comment section. Make sure to like this video if you liked it. Share it on social media. And follow me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Samature Hour. I am on all social media platforms at Samature Hour, so make sure you follow me on all those. Um, also hit that subscribe button, come join the Samature Hour community. We have a fun time over here, and yeah, let me know what sort of content you want to see down below in the comment section. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all later. Bye!